applications with me. Sometime after the recording of the interview, Lily Kubulava communicated with me and told me that the interview was recorded in a very low tone and could not be heard, and to prove that she left me the audio cassette and the questions to prepare a new interview. Approximately a month after recording the interview, on the 11th of March, on the day when Vladimir Vakhani started the political movement in Zugdidi, the Samagrela Chronicle newspaper journalist held a press conference in the house where he lived. They claimed that Vakhani took the audio cassette away from them using threats. There were threats that if Lily did not give the cassette to him, her house would be blown up. On the same day, the Zugdidi police department started an investigation of illegal interference with the realization of the journalist's professional activity. We tried to restore the details of the incitement by means of case materials and the witness testimonies. In the testimony given on the stage of the preliminary investigation, journalist Lili Kubulava claimed that after recording of the interview, Vakania sent his relative to him to threaten her. Quote from the testimony. I was sent by Vladimir Vakani to you to ask you to immediately bring him the cassette or you will have serious problems otherwise. According to the testimony, the journalist answered the requirement in this way. I am a journalist and will not return the interview and the cassette to him. According to the law, Vladimir Vakani does not have any right to demand the cassette from me. Despite this, some days later, Lili Kubulava came to visit Vladimir Vakanya, which she described in her testimony as follows. I came alone to the house of Vladimir Vakanya and brought a dictaphone in the cassette, where the interview was recorded. I thought Vladimir Vakanya would not execute his threats. I wished to record on tape by what authority he demanded, the cassette and why he had threatened me. According to the same testimony, Vladimir Vakanya met her in his house alone, took her to the room, and by threats took away the cassette and dictaphone from the journalist. Text of the testimony. He threatened me. I lost my nerve, could not utter a word. I was really frightened and gave him a dictaphone with the recording of the interview, tears flowing from my eyes. If I didn't do that, I think he would not allow me to leave the house alive. How credible is that defenseless Leila Kubulava came alone to the respondent's house with the cassette, the withdrawal of which he threatened her? Is it not surprising? Or how could it be known to Vladimir Vakhania that the tape in the dictaphone one month later was the very same tape where his interview had been recorded? The testimony given by Lily in court was essentially different from the testimony given by her during the preliminary investigation, when the lawyer asked the journalist to explain why, despite threats, she had come to Vakania with the cassette. Kubulava changed her testimony and declared, no, he did not threaten me before the withdrawal of the cassette. At the trial, a journalist charged her with testimony concerning the fact of withdrawal of the cassette. He took it away from me by means of threats and snatched it out from my hands, she declared on trial. And during her preliminary investigation, she told, he threatened me, I lost my nerve, could not utter a word, I was really frightened and gave him a dictaphone. Lily Kubulava's testimony concerning the fact of the cassette's withdrawal and the threats are put into question by eyewitnesses. Jambul Chikovani. Before Kubulava's arrival, we sat at the traditional Georgian table here. Then we heard a knock on the door. Vladimir asked to open the door, and Lily Kubulava and a neighbor living nearby in our area entered. Vladimir invited her to the table. She sat down here, and Lily Kubulava here on a free chair. Lily Kubulava asked Vladimir to step out with her for a minute, saying it will take him no more than three minutes and that she wished to talk privately with him, and they stepped out to the hall. They went out for about 10-15 minutes, and she then returned here. We invited her to the table again. Lasha Gurtskaya. We didn't hear any noise from that room, and nobody said anything relevant. They entered and Vladimir let her sit next to him. Vladimir stood up and said that our neighbor is a lady and he asked all of us to rise and we stood up to toast the honor of Lili Kubulava. She did not stay long after that. She apologized and under the pretext of business went home. That's all that happened during her visit. And Kubulava in her testimony during the investigation declared that she met with Vakanya in his house alone. None of the witnesses present at Vladimir Vakanya's place on that day were interrogated, neither at the stage of the preliminary investigation nor during that court, to countercheck this fact.
There were several journalists at the press conference arranged by journalists near the house of Vladimir Vakanyak. The press conference had a following result. A senior lieutenant of police, Toria, addressed the chief of the Zugdidi police department with an official report. The official report read, I report that at 17 o'clock radio Imedi has announced that the Russian citizen residing in the city of Zugdidi, Vladimir Vakanya, has threatened the San Miguel Chronicle newspaper journalist by phone with the requirement to give him the audio cassette with the interview. I demand to take measures, was written on the official report. According to the investigation, the materials from the information of the press conference was communicated to Medi radio by journalist Lasha Brulava. But the story of the press conference could not be found on the internet page of Medi radio. The Lasha Brulava told us in his telephone interview that he actually had a short live telephone report from the press conference. Lasha Brulava. Journalists claimed that the audio cassette was taken from them. I remember saying that. I also said that Vladimir Rakanya is an academician. Did your story say that he is a Russian citizen? Lasha Burulava. No, no, no. Nothing was said about the Russian citizenship. The journalist says that the material identical to the radio report also was broadcast the next day at the Medi TV channel, and nothing was said concerning Vladimir Rakanya's Russian citizenship. Here's the story. The Samagrel newspaper journalist demands the return of the audio cassettes taken from her by the academician Vladimir Vakhania. It happened during the Vladimir Vakhania's opposition party constituent assembly. Lieutenant Toria in his official report wrote that Medi Radio had broadcast information on the citizen of Russia Vladimir Vakhania. The word citizen of Russia Vladimir Vakhania appeared in the official report only because Mr. Toria did not hear the story on the radio. He simply received the task of fabricating a case against Vladimir Vakhania. There is no other logic than that which we can find in the facts. Audio record. I do not know what the police officers were trying to find in Vladimir Vakhania's house, radio transferring devices, or an illegal printing office, or any other attributes proving his espionage activities. The search in the cellar, attic, and automobile garage was carried out in order to find an unusual.